he invoked the right to due process. I would want to make a motion that um, Attorney Roque should be detained in the Women's Correction Act. Ah, women's Correction Act. <laughs> Hindi po. Uh, <coughs> uh, doon na lang sa bikutan natin. <laughs> Mr. Chair, sorry po sa pagkakamali. Wala pa pong written subpoena na tinatanggap si Attorney Harry Roque. Nag-file na siya ng motion to quash. Why? I move, Mr. Chair, that we hold uh, Harry Roque in contempt, Attorney Harry Roque in contempt, for refusing to submit the document subject of the subpoena this is taken. If the statements made by Attorney Roque outside our hearings should be grounds to hold him also in contempt, Mr. Chair. As mentioned by the Honorable Paduano, the Quadcom is in possession of the Omnibus Motion and Compliance dated September 9, 2024, filed by Attorney Harry Roque. And I wish to remind the Quadcom that this motion originated from our hearing on August 22, 2024, where in the various questions we propounded, Attorney Harry Roque expressed his commitment to produce the documents. To explain, Mr. Chair, this omnibus motion and compliance is made up of two parts. The first part is the motion to quash, that is from paragraph 1 to 33, and the second part is the compliance to the Shokos order, which is reflected in page 34 to 43. This representation wish to make a manifestation with respect to the motion to quash filed by the attorney Harry Roque. In support of the above motion, Mr. Chair, he raised the same arguments which have been deliberated upon already during the last hearing. And to satisfy the requirement of due process, Mr. Chair, let me reiterate our answers to the arguments which he raised. First, that the hearing is not in aid of legislation. In answer to that, let me explain, Mr. Chair, this Quadcom was created to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation pertaining to four issues which are haunting us. One is dangerous drugs, two is extrajudicial killing, three is the en masse acquisition of land, and four is the POGO operation. In other words, Mr. Chair, we are indeed an exercise of our power to conduct inquiry in aid of legislation which is granted by no less than the Philippine Constitution, Mr. Chair. Second, Attorney Harry Roque argued that the documents requested are not germane to the inquiry in aid of legislation. Again, in the case of Arnold versus Nazareno, there are two requirements. One is materiality to the subject matter. And second is materiality to the possible legislation. With respect to the first requirement, Mr. Chair, it is the humble submission of this representation that the Quad Committee has established an overwhelming circumstantial evidence showing the connection of Attorney Harry Roque to Lucky South Corporation, which is a POGO operator where we apprehended Chinese nationals victims of human trafficking, murder, and internet scam. Mr. Chair, at the height of the interpolation, we ask about the Biancham Corporation, which owns the property in Tuba Benguet, where the IT employee of this Lucky South was apprehended. And that is where we started investigating Bian Cham. And then it was followed by our investigation on the subsidiary companies. As we investigate on Bian Cham, Mr. Chair, we found out the sudden increase of his assets in 2018, coming from 125,000 before 2016, in 2018, the current assets of Biancham rose to 125 million. At the height of the interpolation, Mr. Chair, 
Attorney Harry Roque articulated that his money did not come from Pogo operation. To emphasize, Mr. Chair, that statement did not come from Quadcom, did not come from this representation. Instead, it came from the mouth of Attorney Harry Roque. This is an admission, therefore, Mr. Chair, that he admits the connection of these documents which we are requiring from him from the investigation on POGO operation that we are conducting right now. To further explain, Mr. Chair, it was admitted that he was the presidential spokesperson during that time with a very limited income. And then we asked him, where did this 65 million came from? Where did this money came from? And he could not explain except that he sold a certain property in multinational company in Paranaque. To conclude, Mr. Chair, there is a question about the source of the money of Biancham Corporation, which belongs to attorney Harry Roque. And following his question, if he will not be able to prove the legal and valid source of this sudden increase of assets of Biancham, then there is a reasonable ground to believe that indeed he is connected with Pogo operation and this money possibly came from the Pogo operation. The second element, Mr. Chair, is the materiality to the possible legislation. And during the last hearing, Mr. Chair, we reiterated, ano po ba ang mga batas na posibleng aamiendahan muling pag-aaralan in connection to this Squadcom hearing? And we cited RA 3019. This is the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act na baka sakali na ang ating mga government officials ay nakurap because of this POGO operation. We also have Code of Professional Responsibility of Government Officials that we need to revisit already these, the provisions of this law to make sure that the government officials and employees do not deviate from what is being mandated by the Code of Professional Responsibility of Government Officials. We also have Anti-Money Laundering. Kulang po ba ang probisyon ng Anti-Money Laundering? At nagkaroon ng mga transfer ng huge amount of money in spite of the existence of this law. We also have corporation law. Bakit po ba nagagamit na shield ang mga corporation in perpetrating illegal activities? We can also consider, Mr. Chair, the Code of Professional Responsibility and Accountability for Lawyers. Ito po ba'y saklaw pa if the lawyers are already protecting illegal activities of their client? In addition to this, Mr. Chair, we have established already the need to revisit the law such as the PSA Charter dahil na abuso po ang ating batas patungkol sa late registration, our immigration law on visa issuance, the Pagcourt Charter on licensing of POGO, and the Cybercrime Law or RA 10-175. Mr. Chair, to proceed... Another argument that was raised is the right to self-incrimination. And I wish to share again the case of De La Cruz versus People. Napakaliwanag po sa batas na ito. When we speak about the right against self-incrimination, we're talking only about testimonial evidence. And this time, Mr. Chair, what we are asking are documents. The documents which he promised to produce during the hearing of August 22, 2024. Fourth, Mr. Chair, he invoked the right to privacy. And again, in the case of Standard Chartered Bank versus Senate Committee, citing the case of Sabio versus Gordon, the right to privacy of Philipp the right to privacy is subordinated to the right to public information in matters of public interest. In other words, Mr. Chair, if there is a conflict between the right of privacy versus the right to public information on matters of public interest, the latter should prevail. Mas mataas po ang right to public information on matters of public interest kumpara sa right to privacy. And finally, Mr. Chair, this is the purpose of our hearing. 
to give ample opportunity to our resource speaker to explain their side. We satisfy amply the requirement of notice and even the requirement of hearing. But we are all witnesses. He has been dispensing his opportunity to be able to explain before the Quad all the possible allegations which are being imputed by this investigation. Mr. Chair, I wish to add as well as part of this manifestation that when he filed the motion to quash prior to the receipt of the written subpoena, wala pa pong written subpoena na tinatanggap si Attorney Harry Roque. Nag-file na siya ng motion to quash. Why? Because he knows already during the meeting that he expresses commitment to produce the documents. Reason why we issued the subpoena. To my humble opinion, Mr. Chair, he waived already his right to receive the written subpoena. Second, Mr. Chair, during the last hearing, we extensively discussed his arguments and our answers why we denied his first motion to quash. And third, Mr. Chair, in this motion, omnibus motion and compliance, siya po mismo ang nagsabi. Same arguments ang raise niya. As a matter of fact, he said he is refiling the motion to quash. In other words, Mr. Chair, lahat po nang nakasulat dito ay nasagot na natin during the last hearing. I therefore submit, Mr. Chair, that we should deny this omnibus motion, particularly the motion to quash, because this is already moot and academic. I submit, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman uh, Luistro. Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, uh, Congressman uh, Flores. Mr. Chair, as extensively discussed by Congressman Luistro, stating the grounds why we are in the right as far as we are, our requests for him to submit these documents, and his continued refusal to submit these documents to this squad committee, Mr. Chair. I move, Mr. Chair, that we hold uh, Harry Roque in contempt, Attorney Harry Roque in contempt, for refusing to submit the document subject of the subpoena de Sustecom, and of which he has manifested that he was going to submit to this committee, Mr. Chair. I so move, Mr. Chair. There is a motion to cite... Huh? Attorney Harry Roque in contempt, and this was duly seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. <coughs> now, just for clarification, we are citing Attorney Harry Roque in, in violation of Section 11. D. Paragraph D. Paragraph D, Mr. Chair, for refusing to comply with uh, the subpoena, the uh, Sistecum, and to submit the documents we requested of him, Mr. Chair. Now, Mr. Chair, in addition, Mr. Chair, um, I move that we hold Harry Roque in detention for the period of until he submits the documents or until the Quad Committee is uh, dissolved, Mr. Chair. There is a motion to detain Attorney Harry Roque as long as this committee conducts its, uh, it, uh, its hearing, hearing Mr. Chair. and until we terminate. Or until he submits the or documents. Or until he submits the asked. documents required of him. Yes, Mr. Chair. And this was duly seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is approved. <laughs> Congressman uh, Mr. Chair. Abante. Mr. Chair, in addition to what uh, Congresswoman Luis Trus said, uh, Ito pong si Harry Roque uh, is actually a person with a two-faced attitude. This representation recognizes that we have a full plate and that we need to hear the testimonies of resource persons who have been invited to our hearing today. But I feel compelled to raise a matter that I believe should be addressed by this honorable body. Isa sa mga iniimbita natin sa ating inquiry, si Attorney Harry Roque. Hindi lang po siya dating presidential spokesperson, he is also a former colleague of ours in the House of Representatives. 
At dahilan dito, we were very kind to him. In fact, our senior deputy speaker even asked him only to be detained for one day, of which he even questioned that, uh, Mr. Chair. So in the course of our hearings, Attorney Roque was cited in contempt on August 22 for being untruthful about the circumstances surrounding his absence during our August 16 hearing. After being detained and after apologizing to the members of the House, Attorney Roque then went on Facebook and posted, and I quote, in my view, the contempt ruling smacks of abuse of power and political harassment against an anti-Marcos Jr. critic like me, end of quote. Ay napaka doble kara naman pala ni Atty. Harry Roque, Mr. Chair. I find this disturbing because if I remember correctly, Atty. Roque was asked if he recognizes the power of the House to hold him in contempt. And he said yes. But the moment he was no longer in our presence, Mr. Chair, he went out and publicly questioned the contempt ruling and accused us of abusing this power. I believe that we cannot countenance such, such behavior, Mr. Chair. Naging mabait pa tayo sa kanya. I even asked if uh, the Quad Committee would, be, would hold in abeyance the contempt charge just because uh, we were actually kind to him. So this manifestation is uh, being spoken today to inquire if the statements made by Atone Roque outside our hearings should be grounds to hold him also in contempt, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Abante. Yes, uh, I believe uh, uh, we can defer discussion on that particular manifestation at the moment because we have just cited uh, Attorney Harry Roque in contempt for yeah. violating Section 11 of our Rules of Procedure uh, Governing Inquiries in Aid of Legislation, which states that uh, failure to submit subpoena documents before the committee is a ground to cite him in contempt. So for the meantime, since there was already a motion that was approved unanimously by the body, uh, another motion is also improper, is appropriate, and uh, to where he will be detained. Uh, is there any motion? Mr. Chair, I submit to the motion of uh, Congressman uh, Floresno, and uh, I would want to make a motion that um, Tony Roque should be detained in the Women's Correction Act. Ah, women's Correction Act. Hindi po. Uh, doon na lang sa bikutan natin eh. Uh, Mr. Chair, sorry po sa pagkakamali. So, is that a motion, uh, Congressman Abante? Or Congressman Keith? Mr. Chair, in deference to uh, Attorney Roque being a former member of this House, Mr. Chair, I move that he be detained in the House premises, Mr. Chair. Okay. Second the motion. Okay, Mr. Chair. okay, there is a motion to detain him, uh, detain Attorney Harry Roque uh, at uh, the House of Representatives Detention Facility. And this was duly seconded. Any objection? No objection. The motion is approved. Mr. Okay, Chair, Mr. very quick. Mr. Chair. Okay, just please um, make this very, very quick because the topic today is EJK. Mr. Chair, so just for the sake of giving due course to this omnibus motion and compliance, particularly with respect to the motion to quash, I respectfully move that we disregard the motion to quash on the ground of being moot and academic. Yes, as stated earlier by Congresswoman uh, Jinky Luistro, we, are, uh, we will stand by our previous decision of denying his motion to quash. And again, reiterated by the... Uh, decisions of the Supreme Court that was cited by by Congresswoman Luistro and uh, Congressman Keith Flores. Now, uh, Congressman Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, yes, Congressman Raj Gutierrez. Mr. Chair, uh, very shortly, just on the matter of the omnibus motion. Please make motion, it short, yes. Um, we still have the matter of the response to the show cause order. And uh, I understand it's superfluous given the contempt order, but I think, Mr. Chair, as a body, we should rule on it. And in my opinion, it uh, cites an unstub... It is... Uh, 
It cites an unspecified condition and an unspecified surgery. It makes mention of an unspecified medical facility. It has been unsubstantiated. And my understanding is I, it was uh, imparted to me by the ComSec. He did not even submit the medical certificates. Are you, are you referring to the medical certificate to be submitted to the Quad by the wife of Attorney No, Mr. Aaron? Chair. Uh, this is in response to the Shokos order because during, this is the third absence already by Mr. Attorney oh, yes, Harry right. Roque. The first absence, the excuse was appearance and arbitration. The second absence was un, uh, with no written response. And now he, uh, we issued the uh, Shokos order last hearing, and now he has responded through the motion. It was omnibus po. There was a second part of the Shokos order. And it would appear, Mr. Chair, that uh, it is um, it's an un unsubstantiated answer. And I believe, uh, as a matter of course, we should issue a subpoena, Mr. Chair. Although superfluous given the contempt order, I still think that we should move to issue sub a subpoena at this tificandum, Mr. Chair. Okay, is that a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I move to uh, issue a subpoena for a failure to uh, properly answer the show cause order. Okay, uh, there is a motion to uh, issue a subpoena to Attorney Harry Roque, uh, subpoena ad testificandum for Attorney Harry Roque. Uh, and this was duly seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. He invoked the right to due process.